decompression, tension versus pneumothorax. Needle decompression type questions. They're trying to see if you can di differentiate a simple pneumo versus a tension pneumo. And the one thing that I want you to always remember, does my patient have signs and symptoms of shock? I don't give two shits if your patient has absent breath sounds. Okay, I don't care if your patient's short of breath, has maybe a decrease in O2 saturation, maybe they're tachypneic, maybe they're complaining of sudden chest pain, they got whatever. Does your patient have signs and symptoms of shock? This is how test questions need to be read. Okay, now it's, I'm not telling you that your patient has to be hemodynamically unstable. I'm not saying that your blood pressure has to be low for you to needle decompress, but if it tells you in the test question that your patient is cool, pale, diaphoretic, if it tells you in the test question that the patient has a, a delayed capillary refill, right? This is your test question trying to tell you that your patient is showing signs and symptoms of shock. And if your patient is showing signs and symptoms of shock, your patient is in tension. I had test questions that were telling me that my patient had diminished lung sounds on one side with a uh, pleuritic chest pain that's pain on inspiration. It's, it gave me all their vital signs, but the patient was completely normal, vital signs. And of course, in the answers, it was telling me, oh, perform needle decompression, uh, provide a CPAP. No, hell no, I would never do that. But then one of them said, apply uh, oxygen via non-rebreather and monitor the patient. That's the answer. Okay, just because somebody has a pneumo doesn't mean you need to decompress. Please know that. Landmarks, second or third miclavicular, second or third intercostal space. Remember, we always go above ribs, never below ribs, because there are nerve endings and blood vessels there. So always up and over. Uh, if we're going mid-axillary like these guys are in the photo, um, it's going to be fourth and fifth intercostal space. Believe it or not, mid-axillary is becoming more common.